Welcome to our 20th video with data structures and algorithms. And let's talk about uh, the master method. So what the master method does is it allows us to find some sort of um, asymptotic growth, right, of our recurrence uh, relation of the form uh, t of n is equal to a times t of n over b plus f of n. So we have three cases. The first case says that if f of n is big O of n to the log base b of a minus some positive epsilon, then t of n is big theta of n to the log base b of a. In case two, we have that if f of n is big theta of n to the log base b of a, then t of n is big theta of, the log of n to the log base b of a times log n. And in our third case, we have that if f of n is big omega of n to the log base b of a plus some positive epsilon and a times f of n over b is less than or equal to some constant c times f of n, for c right, between 0 and 1, and for large enough n, then we have that t of n is big theta of f of n. So let's do an example. So here, we have a recurrence relation. And the first thing that we want to do is just to pull out some of our um, data here, right? So we know that a is equal to 2. We know that b is equal to 4. Our f of n is 1. And log base b of a is log base 4 of 2, which is 1 half. And we need to think about which case are we going to use. Well, here, we're looking for if f of n is either big O of something, if it's big omega of something, or if it is um, big theta of something. So, so the easy one, right, would be case one, and here's why. Let's try case one. So, we're trying to find if, right, f of n is less than or equal to some constant, let's call it m, times n to the log base b of a, log base b of a minus some positive epsilon, right? For all n greater than or equal to some other n, of course, right? So let's plug that in. So we have 1 is less than or equal to m times n to the 1 half minus epsilon. Now, is this true, right? Can we find some m and some epsilon that this is true for? Well, of course, right? If we do a 2 here, right, and uh, any positive epsilon, right, would work for this. So, <coughs> clearly, uh, we see that this is uh, t of n is theta of n log base b of a, which is theta of n to the 1 half. And if this, if you don't like exponents, uh, oops, square root of n. Okay, let's try another one. How about this one? So, a is 2, b is 4, once again. f of n is now square root of n. Log base b of a is log base 4 of 2, which is, again, 1 half. And what is this one going to be? Well, last time we found out, right, in this last one, let's just put that one up here. In here, we saw that we're trying to find, uh, you know, in case one, where this is, um, you know, square root of n. If we look back at our rules, right, 
this one is going to be really easy for us. So let's try, and we'll see why. And really, this is just a guessing game if you don't know how to see, you know, right off the bat which one, uh, which case you should use. It's just, just plug it in, really. And so, oh, whoops, that's our next one. My bad. So here, let's plug this in and see what we get. So let's try case two, right? And again, this is where f of n, and actually we're going to use the definition. So we're going to say that there's m1 times uh, n to the log b of a f of n m2 whoops n log base b of a okay and we're going to plug this in so m1 times square root of n less than or equal to well f of n is square root of n less than or equal to m2 square root of n, and clearly, right, this works. We have a couple of constants that we can find that we can make this work. Some positive constants at that. So what do we have? Here we have d of n is theta n, oops, log base b of a, if you can't see that, times log n gives us theta n squared log n. Now let's try the last one and obviously this is going to be a case 3 scenario, right? Kind of trying to show um, the differences. So again a is 2, b is 4, f of n is n this time and log base b of a is log base 4 of 2, which is again 1 half. And as I said, we have a case 3 here. Right? Again, if you don't know that right off the bat, then you just do some testing. It's easy to just plug and chug, basically. And first thing we have to do is we have to find right, some f of n greater than some constant times n to the one-half plus epsilon to epsilon. So let's plug things in. We have n greater than or equal to m times n to the one-half plus epsilon. That's a one-half, sorry. Let's make that better. One-half. And clearly, right, we can find, we can definitely find uh, some value, right, for epsilon and some positive value for uh, this where n is greater than those things, right, because we're going to have, uh, uh, let's even, I mean, it's even obvious, even for the other one, right, for case one, where we have an epsilon, where let's just assume, well, we can't assume, if you just do a little side note for yourself, Right, and say that n is greater than or equal to some constant times the square root of n. Well, clearly we can find something for that, right? And if we just add something positive to this, very, very small even, this will still work. Okay, just on a side note there. So we have another condition. Uh, we said that we have a times f of n over b greater than or equal to c times f of n, right, for c here. So we have 2 times f of n over b, so 2 times n over 4, less than or equal to some c times n. And this is really 1, this is really uh, 1 half n, less than or equal to times c times n, right? And clearly, right, an obvious choice for this, for C, would be 1 half, right, and this would hold. So, therefore, we have case 3, and we say that T of n is theta of n, right, which is F of n. 